Levis and priests were praying together, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. I think you are experiencing the same as me in this place. If that is so, say Amen. When His glory fills not only this place, but it fills every heart in this place, then His glory comes. And when we see His glory, we understand that everything is possible for Him. From the very beginning of this sermon, God is giving His message to us and telling us that nothing is impossible for Him. All who are with us today, the family of Skinia Church, everyone, please listen attentively. Do you know that when the storm comes, quite often there is the voice of God in it. And the voice of God speaks to us out of this storm. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm and said, Can you treat my words with seriousness? Can you gird up your loins like a man? For example, can you take the responsibility? Can we talk seriously? Dear Church, can God talk to you seriously today? Can we have a serious talk today? I am asking the entire family of Skinia Church, can we talk seriously today? I am asking the family of Skinia Church, Church, can we talk seriously to you? Let's have a serious talk. You can relax a bit if you are willing to. Let's take a look at the nature of our God. When God began talking to Job seriously, He asked him questions, talked to him seriously, and at this moment, if you are ready to talk seriously to God, if you are ready to listen seriously to the voice of God, if you are serious about that, then God talked to Job. He told him how great he is, asked Job whether His arm is like God's one. Do you understand that you are in charge of your life and maybe in charge of your family? You can be in charge of your church. Now the Lord has told me something and has showed his greatness. He said, you think about Skinia Church and maybe about someone else, but I think about the entire universe. Would you like to switch places? And, you know, when God talked to Job, Job said the following. It is written in the book of Job, chapter 42, and he answered the Lord and said, What do you answer God today? Really, we just came to the sermon And glory is already in this place. I don't know, but I think that dozens of thousands of people who are here and watching us online cannot be mistaken altogether at the same time. The glory of God is in this place, isn't it? And we understand that everything that is going on in this place is the glory of God. What will you say to God when you see His glory? And look what Job replied to the Lord. Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do anything. Oh, my God, help me at this moment. Can you say these words to your God? I know that you can do anything. Do you know that indeed? You can believe that you and you can contemplate on that and you can know that. I'm sure, God, that you can do anything. But further, There is something else. As far as you can do anything, then God, please return to me all things that I lost. There was severe talk between God and Job. Job has lost everything he had. He has lost his children. He has lost his property. He has had a serious conflict with his wife. He has lost his identity and reputation. Eventually, he has lost God. Sometimes that happens. I want you to say to yourself the following. Sometimes it may happen that circumstances twist us so hard when we come to a sermon and we worship God and we give Him praise and we glorify Him physically, I feel that foundations of the threshold shook and the glory of God is filling this place and filling the hearts. 
Of course, if you are open today, as our youth pastor taught us today, only if you are open. For if your heart is closed, you will just stand at your place without any understanding of what's going on here. I believe that everyone is open today to the voice of God and we hear it. So Job says to God, I know that you can do anything and nothing that you plan is impossible. So my question is, can you agree that there is God's purpose and our purposes? And quite often, our purpose and the purpose of God are totally different. They are different. This causes an embarrassment in many of us, and we start looking for some answers and find different fables and start focusing on unnecessary things and looking into the wrong direction. I understand that there are different levels of faith. Some of us dream of a house, someone dreams of having a car, someone dreams of a husband or wife, and all those dreams are good, but now let's talk seriously and ask God, what is your purpose for me? Nothing that you plan is impossible. And then Job said, who is this that darkens counsel without knowledge? How do we understand God's intention? What does it mean? What are God's intentions for you today? What do you think God thinks of you? Perhaps you, like Job, have lost everything. Perhaps even your friends started accusing you and telling that something is wrong with you. The closest friends, actually they weren't his friends indeed. These people just got a chance. You know, when God starts working with a person, when he guides you through his judgment and teaches you, that person may get into the circumstances where he is humiliated or something else, and in that very moment when it happens, in the life of that person, the people appear who have never had enough courage even to open their mouth and say something, but now they start telling what a great sinner you are and what is wrong with you. Just unworthy people. And God said to Job's friends that he will receive only Job's prayer for not to deal with them according to their folly. In other words, they could do nothing without Job's prayer, but that's their own business. We are talking about ourselves. Nothing that you plan is impossible. So, what are God's intentions for me? What does He want from me? Let me read about one of God's intentions so we could know what kind of God we believe in. I am reading the following. Here Job says, I know that you can do anything and that nothing you plan is impossible. And that's why I will receive a car, I will receive a flat, and that's why God will reward me twice, and so forth. God can do anything. Hallelujah. We can believe this way. It is called a selfish faith. That doesn't lead to, an, to salvation. It can be only here, like a chaff on earth, or like many others. Look what else God says to his people. Our favorite verse that is written in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil. Hallelujah. What God do you believe in? I believe in such God whose plans for my life are for good and not for evil. But my understanding of what is good is often different from God's understanding. Can we talk like grown-ups? I want to give you a future and a hope. Do you understand what God wants to give you? He takes care about your future. What are your plans for your future? To become a pastor or to become a businessman? Your future is heaven, sonship, the tent of God among humans. Those things are your future, and on this way we have also another future, but the main future is that one. 
And for those whose future is there, it is a safe anchor that we cast there into heaven. And then, no matter how much you are tossed by waves of your life, that anchor will help you to go out on the way of truth. So where is the end of your future? Does it end right after the marriage or once your debts are paid or someone paid you back? Well, as soon as I said that someone paid you back, one of you started fidgeting on his seat. Don't think about that at all. It doesn't matter. It's just a vapor. For what is your life? It is just a vapor that appears for a short time and then fades away. And we are in that vapor and we try so hard to hold on to it. But God says, I think about you and my plans are for your welfare, not for evil. My dear friend, whatever situation you are in, if you hear this message today, just know that God has sent me to tell you that His plans are for your welfare and not for evil. And He wants to give you a future and a hope. He is almighty, so nothing He plans is impossible. In order not to learn only from the Old Testament, let's read some verses from the New Testament as well. Paul writes to Philippians and says, it's Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you, he who began a good work in you, has someone begun a good work in you? He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit that was sent to us is in you, and He continues to lead and guide you into the will of God. But look further. When we read only this verse, it sounds very nice and hallelujah. Let's just collect donations, as the scripture says, he thanked for the partnership in the gospel. And then we'll go to our homes. But let's go into details and understand what God wants to say to us as to adults. Further than Paul says, I feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart and pray for you regardless of the situation you are in. I continue praying for you. Then he tells, For God is my witness how much I long for all of you with the compassion that the Messiah Jesus provides. And this is my prayer, that your love will keep on growing more and more with full knowledge and insight, so that you may be able to choose what is best and be pure and blameless until the day when the Messiah returns. Having been filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus the Messiah, so that God will be glorified and praised. So here Paul says, about something which is essential indeed. Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me, let's say it together, that what has happened to me? What circumstances are you in now? What do we want to do? Let's think about that. My circumstances. At that time, Paul was in such a situation when he was imprisoned. He, like a rebel and religious schismatic, got imprisoned. Those were Paul's circumstances. Now let's get back to Job, who said, God, you can do anything, and nothing you plan is impossible. What kind of circumstances did Job have? He was under such severe circumstances that even if we gather all our circumstances together, of course, basically, we, if we gather all the circumstances of our signatures, then they might be close to the ones Job had. We went through a lot, but let's look what God says to Jeremiah in chapter 29, and he says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil. What were the circumstances of those people to whom God spoke? They were in captivity. Just listen, God is speaking to us seriously today, and we have two ways only. There are two options, and I heard it now for real. I heard the, vo the word from God during the worship. What were the circumstances for? Just listen, the most important point of what God wants in these circumstances, in Philippians chapter 4, 
Paul says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. Hallelujah. He says, my circumstances served to advance the gospel. We all love sermons about success. We are successful people. We have success and so forth. Guys, let's talk like adults. What does God talk about? He says that what happens to you can serve to your disappointment, to your defeat or something else, and the devil will bend you lower and lower. But God says, I want you to be successful in what happens to you, but this success should be mine. Does someone hear me? It's so quiet here. I can hear my own thoughts. Do the circumstances of your life, no matter what they are, serve to the success of God to advance the gospel? Do you understand that this is God's providence when He puts you in some circumstances? God says that nothing He plans is impossible, and He also says, if in this intention you are in my will, then whatever happens to you will serve to advance the gospel, the church, the glory of God. What do we want? We want circumstances to change, and we come to other circumstances that would serve to our success. That's the whole problem. That's the dilemma. You want your prayer to be answered. You want God's blessings into your life. You want to be successful, and God is not against that. But He says, you know, in the beginning, glory to me. And beholding the glory of the Lord, we become more like Him with ever-increasing glory by the Lord's Spirit. What circumstances are you in today? It does not matter. Just look if it served to advance the gospel. I would like to tell you something, Skinia. We went through some of those circumstances in which we found ourselves. But look at the success of the gospel that these circumstances have resulted in. Hallelujah! Any circumstances in your life are for you to believe. Me and you should agree that God's plans are for well-being and not for calamity, in order to give us a future and a hope. This is the most important point. On this path, circumstances will reveal what we are. Oh, finally, I heard this priceless Amen. Hallelujah! Listen, today how our God is, it doesn't matter what they did to you. You were broken, you were deceived, you were betrayed. I don't know, maybe something else happened to you, but usually when everything is fine, then we somehow go, but we become lukewarm. We become indifferent and apathetic to God. These are the people we are. But God is good if He has an intention about you, and you know He can do anything, and you know that nothing He plans is impossible, and His purpose is for your welfare, not for evil. But God allows the circumstances to happen to you, because He knows that it will serve to advance the gospel. Your life will become the testimony of God's glory. Christ will be displayed in you, and the Lord leads you. It doesn't matter. Just listen to me, as I know that so many people are disappointed today. I know many disappointed pastors, I know many ministers are disappointed as they misunderstood the will of God. What happened to Job? It was one of the greatest downfalls 
unbelievable defeat and to all this outside condemnation and to all this Satan's pressure on him and to all this he quarreled with God. Did God leave him though? Did God leave Job? No, he did not. Why? Because Job didn't leave him. Because Job was reaching out to God with all his heart, even without an understanding of the circumstances and what was happening in his life. And God doesn't leave such people. God doesn't leave those who seek him. He doesn't leave those who seek him. You are not left by God. This is just the circumstances that came into your life. Look, whether they serve to advance the gospel. Do they serve to the glory of God or not? And then you can boast of your weaknesses, your diseases. Then you can boast of your faults, because in those faults you say, My God is powerful. My God is almighty. My God can do anything. He allowed this to happen so we could praise Him and it will, be ser it will serve to advance the gospel. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Give Him glory! Now, dear church, let's pray. For you cannot even imagine how many people are broken today by the circumstances. They are shattered by the situation they are in. They cannot see the way out of the situation they are in. However, it's there and God didn't leave you and he has the way out, the resolution of your situation. This way out is in him. God is speaking to us as to adults today. Are there people here today who are under pressure from circumstances? Is there anyone else besides me? Let's tell God like adults. God, let these circumstances serve to success. Not to my success, but to advance the gospel and to the success of God's glory. Maybe you need prayer at the altar. I see some of you have already come here. If you feel like you also need this prayer at the altar, you can also come here. But we are praying now for all who are watching us online. Just try to understand that God has intentions for your well-being and not for evil. Believe in that. No matter what circumstances you are in, just in the situation see glory for God. Tell your God, your defender, these words. God, let the circumstances serve to success. Now, I am appealing to the family of Skinia Church. Dear family, you know, we went through certain circumstances and all that served to incredible success. Lots of people have joined us. Lots of people. I can't even tell you the exact number of those who joined us. I cannot count the number of home churches that joined us. Us, how many people leave by the message from Skinia Church. God has allowed the circumstances for the advance of the gospel. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Dear ministers, you went through something. You went through circumstances, but it was done to serve to advance the gospel. And now we should say to God, not my success, not the resolution of my issues, those will also come. It will catch up with you as well. God has promised, so it will come as well, but don't try to influence the circumstances that God allowed to come into your life. Ask God to be glorified in the circumstances instead. Stop thinking about yourself. Stop thinking about your welfare. Just stop doing that because it prevents you from picking up your cross 
in following Jesus. Just know it and trust that God's intentions about you are for your well-being and not for evil. You don't understand it now. You don't see that now. But God sent me to tell you that His intentions about you is for your welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah! Start praying and seeking for Him. Seek Him with all your heart, and He will be glorified in your life and will answer your prayers for sure. Blessed is God. Blessed is God. Blessed is God.